Hey everyone, it's Angus here. I thought with all the stuff and the news at the moment about um, uh, Russia and oil supplies and you know shortages that it might cause around the world, I thought I'd go and have a little quick look to see if there's any gas or oil stocks that you know I'm looking particularly interesting at the moment. So I just thought I'd share you know one way of perhaps going about doing that. So you've got a normal chart page open. You can add whatever indicators you like. As always, I like to have an RSI, which gives me a bit of a um, idea of you know whether a stock's in a value area or not. Um, it's up to you what you what you set it at, but I kind of like seeing stocks between that forty five and six uh, forty five and sixty five is kind of that sweet spot where you know I like to see if a stock's sort of in that you know closer to forty five is more value, and as it's moving up, it's um you know it, it's got a bit of momentum behind it, and then once it starts getting above the sort of sixty seventy type mark then you know at some stage it's going to turn around. And so this particular stock here, and you can see the RSI at the moment is over 80. And so at some stage, you know, you'd have to expect that that might start, you know, pulling back a little bit. But you now that's just a, a, you know, one way of doing it. And the other way of doing it is I like when I can see the blue line. And in fact, I might just change that. I might make it a green line. So um, the MACD, I'm going to make green. Um, and I might make it a little bit bigger. And so I like to basically see when the green line is crossing over the red line on my MACD. So again, it gives me just a, you know, another sort of secondary signal. It just sort of tells me that you know, if the green line's above the red line, then there's you know, momentum sort of on your side. And of course, you know, if you look at the histogram, if the histogram's sort of building a hill, then you also know that momentum's on your side. And it's when these things start turning down. So if the RSI was moving down, if the the green line crosses below um, the red line, then you know momentum sort of heading in the opposite direction. So, not not a be all and end all, just a you know little indication of how I set up my charts. Right onto the show. So let's go and open up the stock screener. Let's give it a little bit more room. Um, the stock screener might look something like this when you first get it. What I'd always say to you is just make your own. So um, what I'll do is I'll go and get rid of. Um, I'll just go and get rid of all these columns just so you can sort of see how you can set up yourself. Remove. I'll keep the last price in there. Remove volume. Remove volume and price. Remove market cap. Remove PE. Just right clicking on them to remove them. Employees and sector. And so you end up with something very simple that looks like this. So then I'll save it. So the left hand drop down is to save your columns. And the right hand drop down is to save your filters. So it's really important you remember that. So I'm going to save columns as, and let's just call this oil or something. Or we'll call it oil and gas because I want to look at both oil and gas. And over here, just so I've got a matching one, I'm going to call this one oil and gas. And that way I then kind of know which ones, you know, are sort of, you know, working together. So what I want to do is I'm going to add volume because I want to make sure that, you know, whatever I buy has a bit of volume. So I'm going to say average volume over 30 days because I'm expecting these are starting to run more recently. And then I'm also going to add um, uh, industry. Um, you could add sector, but I'm going to add industry. And so you can see here I've got, um, if I click on this little globe, this is where I can um, add my market. So at the moment, if I turn it to multi-select, I can say, well, what markets, you know, if I was in Europe, where might I want to start to buy oil from? So I'd be looking at US, I'd be looking at Canada, um, I'll get rid of Saudi Arabia for now. So if I go through my list, you know, who, who am I going to buy oil off? You know, maybe Germany's got oil, maybe Norway's got oil. Um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a big expert on who might have oil in, you know, this part of the world, but, you know, let's just sort of click on a few of them and we'll add a few. Um, Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, Australia, I don't know, maybe Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, who knows? So, you can go through and, you know, you, you, you know, this is obviously dependent upon what market you can buy stocks in. So um, maybe it's a better way rather than doing this. I'll just say, well, I'm going to buy stocks out of just say the US and uh, Australia because that's the two markets that I typically trade. But if you have someone like Interactive Brokers, then you could go through and you could trade all of those markets or, you know, quite a, quite a few of them. So for now, I'm just going to limit it to, to US and Australia just to keep the exercise simpler. But you could certainly go through and you could certainly select in a whole bunch of other countries. So let's go apply. Uh, you have unsaved changes. Let's save them, yes. Oil and gas, yes. You always want to try and make sure you save things as you go. So you can see I've now got a universe of 14,971 
stocks that I can select from. And so what I want to do is I'm going to add change. I'm going to add percent change, which is, you know, what was the change over the last day? And I might say I want the one year change as well. So I wonder if it's, I uh, wonder if it's um, uh, one year, maybe a year. Um, yearly performance, I want, um, oh, that's annoying. Change. Why can't I see one year? Hmm. I wonder if it's performance. They always, you know, you, it's just always a bit of a struggle remembering what these are all called. Here we go. So yearly performance. So let's click on this one. I hope that it's this one. Yeah, so that's the right one. Yearly performance is a percentage. So what I want to do is I'm going to start to say, well, um, for the average volume, I'm going to start adding my filters because I've got 1,400 stocks here. And so I can say, if I wanted to, I can say, let's sort by the stocks that went up the most last night. As you can see here, you know, you've got a few stocks. You know, this was up 494%, 481%, 253%. And I could literally leave it here and I could just start going through the charts. And so you can see this one here, you know, crikey, this one, you know, had earnings and it just went ballistic. So... Um, if I want to work out what that one is, I can scroll down. It says Houston Energy Corp engaged in the development, exploration, and production of natural gas and crude oil properties. So that's an oil and gas production one. And so you can just see this one's just gone bananas for whatever reason. You can have a look at the news. Um, July the 9th. So this is, you know, all quite old news. So you'd have to look at something like Yahoo Finance to work out, you know, what actually happened with these guys. Um, March the 8th. Um, what's it called? Husser shares more than tripled amid a surge in energy stocks since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. More than 120 million shares of the company traded intraday, compared with its um, daily average of about 628,000. Imperial Petroleum also shares surged 114 percent. So IMPP. So let's create a new watch list. So go create new list and call it um, Oil and Gas, and go save. I might go up to this one. I'll just hit Alt W just for interest, and say let's add that one to it. But you can see here I've got oil and gas production. You know, this one here is a precious metal one that also went quite well. But, you know, pretty horrible looking chart. And so you can see that the volume on this one was only 524. The volume on this one was only 9,000. So I want to get rid of some of those. So they're just, you know, too, too little liquidity in those. So I'm going to say let's put 100,000 minimum daily average over 30 days. Um, I'm also going to say, let's only show me, see this one here is like it's 0 0.0068. So I'm going to show you, say, only show me stocks where they're at least 10 cents, so, you know, above 0.1. So I'm down to 6,742. Um, some of these marine shipping ones, so this IMPP, so this is obviously one of these gas container ones, I'm going to assume. Um, provision of international seaboard transportation service to oil producers, so there you go. So I want to have marine shipping and I want to have oil and gas production. Um, you can see this one here, OP. Again, you know, 100% gain. You know, that one's a long way down from where it used to be. So, you know, potentially that one might have more in it just, you know, based on, you know, where it used to be just in terms of previous prices. So that could be interesting. Nine is, oil, you know, it's, it's fascinating. Like I haven't applied any filters yet and all the ones that have had the most changes, these oil and gas and, you know, related sort of um you know, industries or companies. So this one here is packaged software. This one did particularly well. So obviously you can see through here, so it's marine shipping and anything to do with oil and gas. So let's start to filter it further. So let's go, I've got 6,700 stocks. So I'm just going to type in oil, so integrated oil, oil and gas pipeline, oil, oil, oil. And that's all for oil. So let me move this up a little bit. And so you can see now that the only stocks that I've got, 226, are now related to oil and gas. The other one was marine shipping. So let's add marine shipping. So let's go shipping. And so let's add back in marine shipping. And let's also add in gas because they always talk about, you know, gas is also under threat. So gas distributors. And so let's have another look. So we're down to 284 stocks. And let's now sort them by yearly performance. So let's have a look at the ones that are really performing well. You know, over 12 months. So let's start at the top. So JN, JRNGF. So again, it's gone quite hard, but I'd look at this and I'd say, 
you know, the RSI is now 77, so I kind of think maybe I might have missed that run. And so then what I'll do is I'll go back to here and I'll say, let's put an RSI. So RSI, no, so relative strength over 14 days. And so I've got my RSI 14 now. And so I can kind of move this one across because I don't really need to look at him anymore. Um, I've got my change percent my last price, my average volume, my yearly performance. I'm just saying make, make the yearly performance, I don't know, above, you know, let's say, at least 30%. So I wanted to see the stocks that are going up. So I'm down to 153. Now, with my RSI, I'm going to say show me an RSI between, you know how I've got those lines? Let's say 45 and 65. That takes me down to only 48. So that's quite interesting. So that was a, a massive reduction. But oil stocks are probably running quite hot. So let's make this 75 and see what happens. So I've now got 107. So let's start to look through the top. And as I said before, see how there's a little asterisk next to my oil and gas. So I'm going to, I know that asterisk means that my columns are unsaved. So save columns as oil and gas. And I've got an asterisk next to oil and gas. I know my filters are unsaved. So let's go save screens as oil and gas. And so now my filters and my um, columns are, are both saved. Right, let's start going through them. So I poof, whatever that is, I P W F. So, you know, it looks like it's okay. It's within my, you know, sort of sweet spot, you know, that blue sort of range. I could have a look across the top there. I could say, you know, it's sort of back up a bit of a resistance level. I could turn on, um, you know, one of my horizontal lines. This is just stuff that I've got saved. Have a look there. So it's at, you know, what I'd call a bit of a resistance area. And so that could be interesting. And what I might do with that one is I might say, well, if it gets up to, it's kind of $2.87. If it gets up to, say, here, let's end the alert at, say, $2.95. So send me an alert. So if it breaks up through that resistance line, it doesn't get rejected and go back down. So a little bit close to earnings, but if it breaks above that, you know, it could be interesting. Again, definitely not trading advice and everything can change in a moment's notice, but, you know, it's just something to, you know, have a look at. So again, this one here, not doing too badly. Um, you know, it went up 1.66 last night. So let's have a bit of a fiddle. Let's just, instead of change this to see which ones performed the best last night. So GLOP, whatever that is. So it's, you know, gone up, had a pullback. You know, one year, double click. And so you can see, you know, he's been going up. He's had a, you know, sort of steady downward decline. And, you know, of course, on the, all the news, he's heading back up the right way. You know, something similar. Sort of a bit of a big breakout there, big breakout candle there. Big breakout candle there, but after earnings. You can see, you know, the RSI on these is all up around the, you know, sort of high 70s. So, you know, they, they might be a bit too expensive at the moment. But anyway, the, the point of the video is more simply to show you, you know, here's a very quick and easy way to filter stocks um, and to find stocks in a particular industry that you might be interested in pursuing. So, you know, with all the talk about, you know, oil prices might go to $150 a barrel. You know, I think they're about 100, you know, a week ago, and now they're 110, 100, maybe 15, whatever it is. I, I don't know the current price, but, you know, if they're forecasting, they might all go up to, you know, let's say $150 a barrel, depending on what happens, you know, in the, in the you know, European areas. And what that does to sort of petrol prices throughout the world, you know, gas and oil could be a, um, a good short-term investment. So, Something like this OAS, you know, looks particularly good as well. Like I like the look of that, you know, nice sort of steady increase over time and, you know, a recent sort of surge and it's post earnings. So you can see it's obviously had its earnings here um, and, you know, people have liked what I've seen. You can see there's quite big volume coming through. So again, this is the sort of stock that I'd be more likely to have a bit more of a, a look at, depending what it does here, you know, so the next day it might pull back a bit. But, you know, it's just, as I said, a quick and easy way to you know, have a look and see what's happening. You know, another one of these shipping companies, um, Suncor Energy. You know, looks quite good. Obviously, having a good run. Dividends have been paid. This IPWF. So, just a um a short video to say there's an easy way to filter and look for these particular types of stocks. Um, if you uh, if you want to, and you can, you know, add another one that says exchange, yeah, exchange. So you can also know, you know, what market that particular stock is on. So, you know, I've got these different markets here. 
and you can see here, you know, New York Stock Exchange, ASX, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and some of these OTC stocks. So, and I could say, well, let's get rid of the OTCs because, you know, often they're a bit more prone to volatility. And so you can see I've got 97 stocks here, and I can say, well, only show me stocks that are, let's say, above up above 2% today, you know, which ones have momentum, and I'm down to 31 stocks. So, you know, that's something that I can, you know, fairly easily flip through and deal with. So again, you know, North European or Royalty Trust. So, you know, just the fact that it's got European in it, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign, but, you know, again, it's something that I'd add to my watch list and, you know, come and have a look at later. All right, thanks for listening. And um, I hope that that was useful to someone.